Fred Renners, thank you for being with us. Well, thank you very much for having me. And um, so I was introducing um, what you do for the United Nations. Uh, could you give us just a bit of insight on uh, precisely what you, um, your agenda is? Yeah, so I work for ITU, it's the International Telecommunication Union, and we're the United Nations Specialized Agency for Information and Communication Technologies. And we created what's called the AI for Good Global Summit about five years ago, and that was built on the premise that we have less than 10 years to achieve the Sustainable Development Goals, and AI has hold, holds great promise to advance many of those goals and targets. So if you look at anything from uh, healthcare to agriculture, food supply, the environment, uh, gender equity, but also more high-tech solutions like smart cities, autonomous driving, road safety, innovation, collaboration and partnerships, AI has great promise to advance all of these goals. But of course we must be vigilant because at the same time there was a recent mapping in the scientific journal Nature and they basically did a mapping of how AI can positively impact the SDGs and how AI can negatively impact the SDGs. So about 130 or so of 169 targets can be positively impacted. So if you look at things like, uh, for example, using a mobile phone and AI to uh, detect uh, glaucoma or diabetes through the eyeball or detect uh, skin cancer uh, by photographing your skin or even uh, detecting tuberculosis by the sound of your cough. I mean, these are applications of how AI combined with a mobile phone can help with uh, healthcare. Uh, likewise, with uh, food supply and uh, agriculture, we could use uh, satellite imagery to, to map deforestation and see which areas might need more fertilizer, more water, or uh, use mobile phones to identify plant disease. So for example, 40% of crops are lost due to plant disease, but if you could identify the plant disease, you could take a lot of steps towards reducing that number. So on the flip side, the mapping showed that about uh, 60 or so of the targets could be negatively impacted. So of course, the biggest fear is uh, job loss. Or, uh, you know, they've done studies that basically by 2030, possibly a third of jobs could be lost to automation. But those studies also show that millions or hundreds of millions of jobs, new jobs could be created. But of course that transition isn't going to happen overnight. If you're a truck driver who gets displaced, you're not all of a sudden going to become a knowledge worker using AI. So how do we handle that transition? Uh, likewise, there are issues of uh, uh, bias, for example, so more and more AI is being used in decision making. So if you're going to get hired, if you're going to get fired, when you might retire, will you get a loan, will you be released from prison, or even uh, which uh, girlfriend or boyfriend you might end up dating using an app. These, these are all used on data, but we know that these data sets are biased and uh, we have to make sure that we, we work towards creating more inclusive uh, data sets. So for example, how do we know that an application will work equally well on men or on women or on persons of different skin colors or different ages or in developing countries where basic things like electricity and connectivity are still an issue? Uh, these are things that don't occur naturally to people, whether you're a startup or a big tech company. Um, but these are things that occur at AI for Good, and that's where we uh, try and get all these voices together to uh, discuss these issues and make sure that AI develops in a safe and beneficial way for all. Well, what really is AI? Well, if you look in the dictionary, it would just basically say it's a discipline of computer science that tries to simulate intelligent behavior in machines, right? But I think there's a much more interesting way to think about it. It's AI is actually made up of, of different techniques that are actually quite different, but when combined, could create what you would call an intelligent machine. So you have things like uh, machine learning or deep learning or natural language processing or uh, computer vision or robotics or now you have transformers and, and these are all different techniques and you would probably see them in your daily lives. So for example, machine learning, uh, when you're looking at Netflix and getting your recommendation or buying something on Amazon, these are machine learning al algorithms that try and identify your preferences and, and provide uh, recommendations. So you probably engage these in your daily life all the time. Well, we're going to be seeing a lot of these uh, precisely during uh, these days of, of Naya. Uh, thank you for being with us uh, here today.